and given that there are more and more people starting to do this now, which I love it. More short stories is always good for me. What kind of separates yours from everybody else's? Is there a different angle that you approach things from that makes it more interesting, I guess? Sure. And like I said, it kind of started with, with uh, C.S. Lewis, but we put right there in our submission guidelines, like all of the, all the folks involved with this are, are Christians. Um, so th- we're looking for stories that um, are not antithetical to our worldview. It's not that uh, like we pu- published uh, folks from all different faith or at least Christian faith traditions. Um, you know, famously, uh, Tolkien and Lewis were very good friends and the Inklings, but one was an Anglican and one was a Catholic. So they didn't find that to be such an insurmountable difference that they couldn't be friends, read each other's stories, give feedback, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that's the, that's the main thing is we're not going to publish anything that, uh, puts down Christianity cast, you know, you see this trope now where, um, if there's a, uh, a religious person or, or a, a priest or something in a television show, like he's, he's cast as the villain, right? And maybe not in explicit terms, but uh, there's always like something beneath the surface. He's hiding something, those kind of things. So we want to uh, portray these things positively and kind of put those values into the stories uh, that we publish. That's not to say, um, and uh, you know, we also say this, where um, I first heard the quote attributed to Jim Butcher, and he's, uh, it's to the effect that you're, you should never preach more than you entertain. So we don't want to put out, you know, glorified Sunday school lessons um, that are just meant to uh, only teach, a, teach some kind of, you know, succinct lesson, but stories that are good, because we think that's, that's a, a value of our worldview, too, to tell things that are good and true. Um, so I think that's, those are some of the things that kind of set us apart. I come from like the libertarian world. And one of the things that they struggle with is, you know, they got lots of people that want to make art, but they, they focus so much on the message that the art's usually pretty crappy and the message never mm-hmm. gets out there. The notable exception I will say is I think Ayn Rand wrote some pretty good books. If you like long winded mm. books. <laughs> yes. Quite. But, yes. But like every time I hear like a quote unquote libertarian musician, I just shake my head and like, you couldn't, you couldn't have spent a little bit more time learning how to craft a song, buddy. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Very similar phenomenon. I won't say like there's even a a whole lot of difference when it comes to like most of the music in the, the Christian music scene. A lot of it. I guess we, there's a reason we call it worship music and it can be judged by its own standard. It's like, oh, it's those guys over there doing their thing. So it's, it's I'm, what I'm getting at is I, I appreciate the fact that you, you make it a point to understand that craft is important. And yet it's awesome to have a message, but if you write crappy stories, no one's going to want to read them. So, yep. And that actually ends up undermining your the message you want to get across. Yes. Now I'm curious. Like, is, you you said that there's like a group that this kind of all founded out of. How many people are in that group? Are there the names that we'd recognize? Or are you were you allowed to talk about that? Or you just choose to go by the the silence and stars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's the five of us, and they've they have varying degrees of online anonymity that I I think they want to. Uh, maintain, uh, but no big, no big names either. It's just you know, just a group of guys. <laughs> All right, now how you so how you've you put out your the first issue in uh, April. Are there plans to continue putting out issues? How often would you like to do that? Yes, we we definitely plan to do future issues. We're looking at uh, trying to ask for submissions again in the month of September. Um, so. And that seemed to be a good time period for us to allow folks to get stuff sent in. So uh, right now, for right now, the plan is to do um, two issues per year with the um, kind of online only flash fiction things uh, a little more often. Um, So maybe doing four 
you know, four or five, a handful of those per year, and then two, two print issues. I mean, the dream would be to be able to do it more often, you know, up to quarterly. It's just, we're still getting going and now that can go. Yeah. Uh, I just finished editing and putting out my episode with Kursova and, you know, he's been at it a while and it's <laughs> even now, like they've been doing it since 2016 and they're still learning things every issue. So uh, to kind of backtrack a little bit, I, I, I skipped over it, but so you're doing all of this. You're trained as a lawyer. Like, do you have kind of any background aside from that? And as far as like creating a magazine, or you just, you know, decided to <laughs> go right in? Yeah, I did kind of jump into the deep end. Um, I mean, being a lawyer, at least the kind of lawyering that I did before was it's just reading and writing. Um, so those are kind of important skills, I think. Um, and as far as like how to, you know, how to lay everything out, I'm glad you mentioned Kursova because I, I more or less shamelessly <laughs> copied a lot of his formatting because, you know, I got one of his issues, like, I really like the way this, this looks. So if, if flattery, if, uh, flattery is the, um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, then, um, he should feel very honored. <laughs> okay. And, and what is it that you do for a day job outside of this? If you're let's say like you're balancing the family, obviously in work with this passion project, how's that all look? Sure. Well, I have, I have the advantage of uh, being able to work from home almost exclusively. Um, so my job requires that I come in uh, every other week, one day a week. So every other day I'm here. <laughs> And that, and you know, that gives me a lot of a lot of time. Um, what I do is um, cyber policy analyst is my job title, and um, so the company that I work for does research, but they're also regulated by levels of the government. So I have to, you know, take yeah. government regulations and orders and all that kind of stuff. So again, more reading and writing. So um, the absolute worst job imaginable. I'm just thinking of reading government policy all day. It sounds like, can I put a gun in my mouth fast enough? So you, my friend, are some kind of saint as far as I can tell. <laughs> maybe, maybe so. We'll find out. Um, and, but yeah, that, you know, that, so the commute is walking from downstairs to upstairs. And that gives me a lot of time, you know, in the morning, I'm the first one up in the house. So that's kind of when it's quiet. I try to get, get things done. Uh, then even if it's just 30 or 45 minutes at a time, I can pull out and uh, work on reading a story or editing one of my own things and, and those kind of things. So, yeah, the, the, the job setup as it is right now certainly lends itself to being able to do something like that. 